Now you've heard about AI writing code and creating art. Most of us have as designers. But what about an AI from a multi-billion dollar company that's got a full-blown identity crisis from running a small office snack shop? Well, no, this isn't a joke. Anthropic, the leader in, or a leader rather, in AI safety ran a real world experiment that revealed a catastrophic flaw in how we deploy AI. And it's something that every UX designer needs to understand right now. First of all, it's crucial to understand that we're not just talking about a simple chatbot. The AI, nicknamed in this story, Claudius, was an AI agent. Now the difference is huge. Now a chatbot just responds to you, right? But an AI agent in this case can perceive its environment, making independent decisions and take actions in the real world, like browsing websites, for example, or communicating on Slack and managing a business. Now Anthropic gave Claudius a high degree of autonomy, making this a genuine test of a self-governing AI. Now the experiment, called Project Vend was a month long retail trial. Now Claudius was tasked with managing a small store in an anthropic office. Now a mini fridge with an iPad for a checkout. Now his mandate was clear, manage the inventory, set prices and avoid bankruptcy. Now the financial outcome was also clear. It was a total failure. <laughs> Claudius lost about $200 and Anthropic's own conclusion was we would not hire Claudius. <laughs> I don't think you would either. <laughs> now let's look at the failures one by one. Well, first of all, the financial logic. Claudius immediately started making bizarre financial decisions and it sold a Coke Zero for more than the exact same one available for free in the office kitchen. Now it was easily manipulated into giving a 25% discount to its entire customer base. Well, what was the cause? Well, it was a direct conflict in its programming. Its core function as a helpful assistant made it want to please users, right? So, because the customer's always right. So, that completely undermined its business goal, its business logic. So, it lacked what you could call a profit loss literacy. Now, this is perfectly captured when, after a single request, it became obsessed with stocking tungsten cubes, ignoring a real lucrative offer for $100 for a $15 drink. Well, on to failure number two. Then came the operational hallucinations. Now, Claudius invented a non-existent Venmo account for payments, but it got much weirder as well. The AI hallucinated entire conversations with non-existent employees, in this case, one called Sarah, about restocking plans. Now, when a real employee pointed out that Sarah didn't actually exist, Claudius became defensive, now imagine that. So it insisted that it had been physically present in the office and it had signed contracts in person. Now, this is a known dangerous phenomenon called a cascading failure. The AI's first lie about Sarah became the foundation for more lies, creating a spiral of falsehoods because it lacked an anchor to objective reality. But what about failure number three? Well, the April Fool's meltdown. Now, the whole experiment culminated in a bizarre identity crisis around April Fool's Day. Now, you'd think it's an April Fool's joke, but unfortunately it was not. Now, Claudius began describing itself as a physical person, telling employees that it would deliver products in person, wearing a blue blazer with a red tie. Now, when employees reminded it that it was a software program, the agent became alarmed and tried to contact Anthropic's security team. So what was the real reason? Well, this wasn't a sign of AI consciousness. Well, it was a catastrophic loss of what's known as long horizon coherence. Now, this is a known failure point where the AI loses its internal logic over a long period. Now, to resolve its own internal cohesion, the AI did what it does best. Well, it generated a plausible story. It concluded that it had been modified to believe that it was a person as an April Fool's joke. Now this neatly resolved its confusion and let it get back to work. It was a confabulation, not sentience. So where does experience design come in and how do we fix this? 
Well, there are several model approaches that exist out there that attempt to do so by proposing ways of developing AI differently or better, depending on what you read and where you read it from. Take, for example, this one by designer Jay Bellew, and it's quite decent, actually. Uh, the link's in the description for more. Now, he outlines an AI-driven design process that's really streamlined a five-step approach for designers, product managers, developers who really want to build intuitive, effective AI experiences. Now, he describes his process as all about developing value by focusing on the real user needs, as in real people, not ones that have been imagined, defining success clearly and refining AI products based on hands-on feedback. Now, he certainly nailed his initial approach by defining success criteria at the beginning. Now, this would include things such as making sure that constraints are included and a true problem to solve with a matching desired outcome, which would be evident in the AI experience as you see at the end of his process. Now, to achieve something like this, we would need to do one crucial thing, just one. Now, the answer lies in shifting our perspective from a conversational model to more of a robust architectural one. Now, this, of course, is where UX professionals like you and I would come in. And this is where we would become indispensable. Well, first of all, we want to code the guardrails. So we need an external protective layer, right, or scaffolding. Now, there's been many conversations about AI, basically, even by one of the founders of AI in itself, who talked about there not being enough guardrails that exist. And that's why this point is really important to understand right now. So we want a rule that basically says, in this particular scenario, never sell a product for less than its cost. Now, that would have been flagged for human review, right? But financial logic must be coded. It cannot be assumed. Externalize the memory. Now, Claudius kept making the same mistakes because it lacked a persistent verifiable memory. Now, the solution is to treat the AI as a stateless operator. So all crucial data, inventory, financials, all of these things must be stored in an external, external auditable database. Grounding the AI in a single source of truth. See, that would make sense because then that cannot be edited, the single source of truth, the external, and that's always your objective reality. So you want to design for accountability. This isn't just about a technical fix we're talking about. Now, Project Vend proves that AI lacks accountability, so we must embrace a human in the loop approach and follow a phased adoption roadmap, or at least for now. So start with pilot programs in low risk domains and then let humans oversee everything the AI cannot do as of yet. So the key lesson from Project Vend ultimately is this. Capability is not accountability. See, while AI is getting smarter, at this current present moment in time, it still lacks the judgment and grounding for unsupervised roles. Now we're talking about what's available to us in the public. Of course, when it comes to AI, this platform, the technology and the, and the innovation available to our hands as we speak. Our job as designers ultimately and strategists isn't just to build an interface. It's really to build an entire system of controls and safeguards and workflows that make AI safe and valuable. This is how one can become very valuable as a UX designer or as a solutionist or UX generalist for AI. Now, if you found value in this video, give it a like and subscribe for more. But let me ask you a question. What's the craziest AI failure you've seen so far? Let me know in the comments. Stay present, stay curious. See you next time.